I'm Melissa Rowland with the Los Angeles Times, and we're here at the premiere of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's new documentary. Can you explain the motivation behind creating your film On the Shoulders of Giants? Well, uh, in doing On the Shoulders of Giants, I wanted to just give uh, some acknowledgement to my community where I was born and raised in Harlem, and uh, some of the things that made it special, uh, especially the Harlem Men's basketball team. More than being the greatest basketball player to ever live, he's a... Uh, uh, Kareem's a historian. Uh, he, he's, he's a mentor of mine, and uh, he's full of information. And even before the books and the movies, uh, the conversations we would have about history and jazz and uh, people who have played a significant role in our lives, uh, it, was a, it was a topic of conversation. So to see him bring it to life and, and bring it to uh, the screen, um, you know, I, I, I just love Kareem and support the things that he does. So that's why I'm here. What type of inspiration has Kareem been for you? Man, he's, a, you know, that's the captain. What he's done in his career has been remarkable and unbelievable. And I think people have to be aware of how much he's meant to, to basketball and the sport. What was Kareem like as a teammate? Quiet. <laughs> but what most people didn't know about him, Kareem is very silly, you know, he's, a, he's like a practical joker. So it was, it was very nice playing with someone like that because I had opportunity to win championships and I definitely wouldn't have won championships without him. What type of practical jokes did Kareem play on you? Well, you know, he's always been aloof and I think it always surprised people when he does anything. You know, he's the kind of guy that might trip you if you sleep, play, do something to you, put something on your face. But, you know, silly, silly things. And, uh, you know, he's a very intelligent, uh, misunderstood by a lot of people. But when you get to know him, you know the quality of person that he really is. And he cares a lot. And so that's why I've always been a, an admirer of his. In December of 2008, what was your reaction when you were diagnosed with cancer? Well, you know, that's always a challenging moment. You know, it's, it's scary. Uh, but uh, very fortunately for me, I, I, I've had a lot of support. And uh, by becoming knowledgeable about it, uh, it really helps you overcome the, the things that uh, you think are going to pull you down. And how are you feeling now? I feel great. I've always been aware of the fact that uh, I'm not immortal. So... Uh, that uh, really wasn't a, a significant issue for me, but uh, you always say to yourself, uh, why me, why now? So, you know, maybe that, that question came across my mind, but uh, like I said, I'm doing well now. Where does Kareem rank on the list of all-time Lakers centers? Probably right top, <laughs> top. Uh, you know, he's a six-time MVP, uh, won six championships, um, and uh, top scorer in, in the league. So, uh, so obviously, he ranks at the top. Where do you rank? Uh, much lower than him. <laughs> What's your prediction for the Lakers? Uh, I don't have any predictions for the Lakers. I, I learned a long time ago not to do that. I know you've worked a lot with Andrew Bynum specifically. What's your evaluation of his progression as a player? Well, you know, a Andrew's uh, come a long way. He's learned a few things. Uh, as long as he can go out there and uh, contribute to the Lakers, uh, they'll be a successful team. What can we expect next from Kareem? Well, hopefully uh, what I'm all about right now uh, will continue and I'll be able to, to make more films.